David Burroughs, Chief Investment Officer and President at Barometer, is here taking your questions on North American large caps at 1-855-326-6266. Mark Ontario bound now for Jack. Hi, Jack. Hi, Michael. Hi, Dave. Um, I, Dave, I know you like industries that have broken down from the broken up from the bottom after being in the bottom for many years, and the lumber industry has broke broke up and. Uh, I also know that you like um, the best companies in in good industries. I'm wondering if Interfor is a company that you would like. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. So, Jack, that, 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 that's, a, that's a great summary. Ultimately, if you're in a decent market, you want to own things that people care about. So, uh, you know, we are in a time when the Canadian market has not really been in favor, partly because of, uh, partly because of resources. Uh, but the weak dollar is really beneficial to certain industries, and the forest industry is one of them. So uh, when you look at the Canadian forest stocks, you could take a look at a West Fraser, or you could take a look at an Interfor, or you could take a look at Western Forest, all of them you know, coming on a very nice basis. The U.S. housing industry is improving. The U.S. consumer is improving. A lot of our stuff goes down there. Uh, with a weak dollar, it makes our Canadian uh, lumber very attractive. But Interfor is already up 39% over the last year. Is the run done? I, I, think this is, I think this is early days. We, in the last month, have added significant exposure to home builders mm -hmm. and those that supply the home builders in the U.S., uh, and I think that this is relatively early days. So uh, we think that through the year, the U.S. consumer is going to steadily get better. You have to remember that when you have uh, energy get cut in half in price, it takes months for that to work its way into the economy. So we think the economic data as we get into the spring likely really starts to pick up. Uh, when you look at the housing industry in the U.S., you know, the administration has just cut the down payment on a new home for a first-time home buyer from 10% to 3%. Mm -hmm. So here we go again. <laughs> uh, they've reduced the cost of mortgage insurance by a half of 1%. They want to get the 3 million people who are living in their parents' basements out into a new home. Uh, and our Canadian lumber companies are going to benefit from that. So I think this is one of those sectors you really need to have in your portfolio. And I think Interfor is a great ad. It broke out, it pulled back into support, and is now starting to rally. I'd be a buyer of that stock right here. I see the momentum indicator of the MACD is uh, modestly positive but improving. And the relative strength index, that herd mentality indicator, is at 58, suggesting that people are just starting to, to tune it's, into this. It's relatively early. And if you believe, like we do, Canadian dollar is likely to remain weak, then this sector has a tailwind. Thanks for the call from Markham Jack. Off to Natalie now on the local line in Toronto. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Michael. Thanks so much for taking my call. Mr. Balls, what can I say? It's such a joy to listen to you. Um, I was thinking about asking about Brookfield Asset Management, but since you have so many wonderful ideas, I'm trying to think which one you think would be more advisable for a long-term hold, either Brookfield or BlackRock. So please give me your advice, and I'd very much appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, Natalie, thanks. Thanks for your kind words. Actually, I have to tell you, I think you've picked two great companies. Okay, but it's one per so customer. So one per customer. So listen, I have to put my money where my mouth is. Uh, the largest position we have at the firm is Brookfield Asset Management. Uh, I think that this is a collection of uh, very strong cash flow generating assets. We are in a world where return is hard to come by. They are getting great returns in their underlying units. Uh, and there's great demand for dividend-paying entities or distribution-paying entities, which their, their subunits uh, uh, do. Uh, there is um, a very strong demand for uh, management of you know, hard assets. And so I think that Brookfield is a, is a great long-term hold. You probably put that in your portfolio, hold it for a long time. It's been a very steady performer uh, and, uh, and one that is liked by both institutional investors and private investors. And I think the multiple on this stock can continue to expand as we go forward. All right. Thank you, uh, Natalie, for that. Ash in Scarborough, last word to you. Hello. Hello. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? Good, how are Great, you? Thank you. Very well. David, would you be kind enough to give me your opinion on Micron Technology, please? MU on NASDAQ. Sure. I paid 3050. It went to 3650 and I didn't sell it. So should I buy more or should I just get rid of it and take my losses? Okay. What is your opinion? Is it going to go up? Are you holding in your portfolio or not? Okay. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Ash, thanks for the question. Uh, semiconductors, I think, are a great sector to watch. Because today, I would argue that the semiconductors are what copper used to be. 
when the semiconductors are performing well, that tells you that people have strong expectations for future growth in the economy. There's a very short inventory cycle in semiconductor companies, and uh, when the economy is getting better, their orders tend to come in quite quickly. The semi group is acting very, very well. Companies like Micron and Sandisk have had a little bit of a pullback. Sandisk a lot more than Micron. Micron, I think, looks very attractive. Uh, this is a, not an expensive stock. Their, uh, their chips go into all kinds of devices. We do own the stock. Uh, and so long as the semis act well as a group and it holds above its support, which is somewhere down around $26, I think that this is something that, that, uh, that you can buy and, and probably do quite well with over the next year. Ash, 80% of the analysts polled by Bloomberg do have a buy recommendation, 17% with a hold, the remainder with a sell. Street consensus north of $42, 12 months, suggests 36% upside from here. Thank you for the calls, emails, and tweets. We're taking a brief break. Of course, you can also tune into the program five days a week at the usual time on the Canada Talk Sirius XM Satellite Radio Channel 167.